All right. Well, this seems a little crazy to me, but let's bring in TJ Walker, news commentator and CEO of Media Training Worldwide. Hey there, TJ. Now, we should mention this legislation Hi. has not been passed, but really? This is really going on? It's your city. Talk to me about this. <laughs> well, don't blame that on all New Yorkers. Most of us don't want this. This is absurd. These politicians need to develop a thick skin. You know, anyone who's in public life, anyone who gives opinions on the Internet, they've got to be ready for criticism. I mean, I get nasty comments every day. People say they hate my beady eyes. They say they hate my hair. i got to live with it. It's, it's tough. When you're going to limit the first amendment to the Constitution, you better have a good reason. And shouting fire in a full theater, that's a good reason. National security or threatening to kill a high public official, that's a good reason. But just because I might have my feelings hurt, not a good reason. Yeah, you know, last time I checked, I mean, you mentioned the First Amendment. That's been around forever. Guess what? We're also living in a post-Citizens United era, where not only can you say mean things about political candidates, according to the Supreme Court, and do so anonymously, you can also give as much money as you want and also remain anonymous. I guess I'm just wondering how these, you know, local lawmakers think that they can even get away with this. Well, my, my suspicion is they're just trying to play with some of their detractors. They're trying to send a, a, a chill up their spine. They don't really think this will pass. They certainly don't think this would pass constitutional muster in the court system, but they're doing it to intimidate and it's not going to have an impact. Something tells me these politicians are going to be trashed even more anonymously and by people who put their names. I mean, I always put my name when I'm criticizing someone on the Internet, but that's just me. I have a big ego. I want credit. And for people who want privacy, they deserve it. And in America, you have the right to be nasty. That's the bottom line. <laughs> and I, we should say it is all across America. But, and it's not just New York where they're trying to sort of um, push back on this. In Idaho, uh, a local Republican Party official is suing a commentator on a newspaper website, uh, trying to force that newspaper, the Idaho Spokesman Review, to not only turn over the com commentator's information, but also to turn over the information uh, on people who left comments on the article. Um, Talk a little bit about this. I mean, I think this goes along the lines of what you said about people need to have a thicker skin. Um, uh, but what's the, the right reaction here? Well, it's, it's chilling. It should scare anyone who cares about freedoms. But we've seen this before in America. Let's not forget all the, the court battles that Oprah Winfrey had to go through just because she said she didn't like hamburger. I mean, that's the reason we have Dr. Phil around today is that court case. So every so often there are politicians who abuse their power and want to protect their little feelings or the feelings of some powerful interest group by shutting down people's ability to communicate. But in the long run, it never works. What do you think about one of the, uh, the people that Anastasia interviewed in her piece, uh, you know, said something smart. He said, because people can remain anonymous on the Internet, uh, it helps them remain honest. I mean, how many times do we read, uh, you know, an article in The New York Times or The Washington Post where it's, you know, uh, an unnamed official uh, who gave this comment? Uh, but even when it comes to restaurant reviews, I mean, maybe there's an employee at the restaurant who has inside secrets. The people in the kitchen are spitting in the food. Uh, they're not going to do tell people uh, and leave their name, but they're going to tell people nonetheless. Uh, what do you think about this notion that, it, you know, honesty equals anonymity? Well, sometimes anonymity helps people who want to be honest, but that's not why we have freedom of speech. That's not why there's a constitutional protection against limiting speech. It's simply a right of Americans to say what they want. Because I would argue for every one really honest comment that came out because someone had anonymity, there's probably a thousand where people are just making obscene, nasty, vicious comments. I mean, I get it every day. I'm sure you do, too. Someone hears a political opinion they don't like, they instantly want to question your sexuality. Now, that's not a good thing, but we have to make sure that the solution isn't worse than the problem. I think that's a really good point. Um, uh, talk to me about what you think. I mean, I, I don't know how likely it is that this bill would pass in New York, but what do you think would be the implications if it did pass? I don't think it's going to pass. If it does, I think it gets vetoed by the governor. If it's not vetoed by the governor, I think it gets struck down by a lower court. If it doesn't, it will be struck down by the Supreme Court. So as a practical matter, I don't think this is going to have an impact. But it doesn't mean people who care about civil liberties and press freedoms shouldn't take it seriously. 
Yeah, well, I mean, what do you think? I, I know in your your line of work, you're you're in the media. Um, you know, what's the answer to, to these for these people who, uh, you know, are having their feelings hurt? I mean, maybe isn't there a media strategy for them to come I, back? Yes, I have a perfectly good strategy. I use it every day because I have thousands of videos on the internet and columns posted as as you and many of your colleagues do. And here's the thing: the second I read someone saying, you know, TJ, you're so ugly that I just stop reading. And you know what? It doesn't hurt me. I've yet to uh, have anyone come to my door and threaten violence just because they wrote something nasty. They don't think I'm, you know, if they want to say I'm really ugly, I don't think it's true. But you know what? To them, it's true. They should have the right to say that. Yeah, I mean, on the on the opposite end of this, a lot of people say, you know, there's the fear, uh, that, you know, for new businesses, for example, that competing businesses will start leaving negative comments on the website. But it's one of those things that I think, uh, over time, you know, word of mouth and, and the truth usually comes out, right? Yeah, people do catch on to that, and you can snuff it out. And if if you are a business, I mean, there's nothing prevents preventing someone whispering to their friends, "Hey, don't go to this." Are, are we going to patrol the streets to see what people are whispering to their friends? At some point, you have to say, "All right, the government just can't solve every problem in the world. We've got kids who can't read. <laughs> We've got a massive obesity problem." What people want to say about others is just not something we can have government attention focusing on. Uh, very good point there. TJ Walker, news commentator and CEO of Media Training Worldwide in our New York studios. Thanks so much.